Hello, Bizarre Story friends. You're tuned in to the Bizarre AF where we talk about the strange, the absurd, the unknown, and things that are Bizarre AF. <laughs> I'm Kevin. I'll be your host for today's episode. And as always, we ask you to keep an open mind, keep a skeptical ear, but keep on listening to them facts. We take you on our newest journey through Texas killing fields. <laughs> Bizarre story, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Bizarre AF. How are you, Alicia? <laughs> oh God! After an <laughs> intro like that, I am so good. I was like crying <laughs> the whole time. If you guys aren't watching on video, I had uh, the full-on Texas hat and the glasses, and the reason I sounded weird is because I had a stick coming out of my mouth, <laughs> it looked like a piece of straw. <laughs> I didn't have straw, so I had to find some what twig. <laughs> <laughs> he went outside, grabbed a twig. I was wondering what took you so long. <laughs> yes. I can find a stick. That is so funny. So uh, before we recorded just some BTS behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, I was I was talking to Kevin. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, what should I wear? I was like, I don't know. Like something creepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking like aviator glasses. And you just I pulled. I said the cereal bomber. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or the Unabomber. Unabomber. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Uh -huh. And you fucking pulled this shit out. <laughs> like, like, how did you have all of these things? Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> you never wear them all I'm together. Because the Unabomber. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's still not me. <laughs> yeah, Definitely not, not you. Yeah. Like Definitely not you. Yeah. Um. So, have you ever been to Texas? Texas? I have been to Texas, actually. Have you? I actually, uh, yeah, I lived in Colleen, Texas for like a few months. Um, Where's that at? It's, good God. Oh, people are going to be like, oh, you don't know where it is. It's like, it's like near. <laughs> I, I was 12 or I was like 13. I think it's near Fort Worth. Or no, Fort Hood, Fort Hood. It's near Fort Hood. Okay, I don't know where that Texas. is. I don't know. It's a military base. It's like base. high, low, east, west. No, don't know. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is it anywhere? It's, it's, it's like in the middle of nowhere. Is it anywhere near Houston? Do you know? Uh, I think it's close. I don't know. You don't know. I, because because honestly, whatever I say is going to be wrong. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. So you could have been living in a murderous area and you didn't even know it. Oh my God, for sure. That place feels murderous. It, like, like peop, that's where people's like dreams go to fucking die is Clean Texas. Oh my God. Sorry, sorry, Clean Texas oh, folks. Oh, listen, poor, we have Texas <laughs> listeners. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's not all bad. <laughs> 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 uh, it's not. It's not. Um, so have you ever heard of the Texas or sorry, have you ever heard of the killing fields? You know what? Um, mm. you had mentioned to me that you were going to be doing this episode and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I feel like I have heard of the Texas killing fields. Uh -huh. I briefly looked at it because I wanted to know what I want what I was gonna wear. Gideon too. Oh <laughs> I need to have my outfit. <laughs> I needed to I needed to have like it's not it has nothing to do with like knowing like the topic before we <laughs> do right. it, like it's being professional. <laughs> I'm like, no no, how can I like fit the theme? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, actually, um I I, I have so heard of it. So before that had you heard of it? I had, I okay. had like briefly, but honestly, I don't recall very much of it. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be a great refresher. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell you of a very bizarre AF murder story. And we've not talked about murder. Murder. We've not done a real episode <laughs> on that. So we're going to do that. Um, And this story was going to jump all over the place. In Texas? No, all over, as the like, timeline time? is going to oh, jump. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about all kinds of characters and people. And it might get a little confusing. And that's okay, because I'll okay. get confused with you. Okay, cool. Um, But there's so many people 
And there's so many different, this is, spans such a time frame that it's it cray cray. So, yeah, I have a notepad and I'll ask okay, questions. Fine. And I'll try to answer them. But I'm also going to say that I am drinking kava. Okay, so great. Out of our goblet. Should we be both great. Are, this will make it way easier to understand. <laughs> yes, exactly. Things will sink in <laughs> yeah, a little better. Totally. But I'm here. I have my I have my notes and I'm ready to. Okay, because this story is effed AF. Yeah. I mean, How this episode should it? be called effed AF because it is Not effed. Really? It's effed. The, the people are disgusting. Just effed. Disgusting. It's disgusting. Okay. But it's so, like, beyond what I can comprehend. I, I, this, I call it bizarre. I mean, yeah. that's such a mild word. Yeah. But so if it fits, if it's, okay? Mm hmm. Okay. So, drive south out of Houston, Texas, down I-45, and you'll see nothing of great interest. Just a bunch of open lands and <laughs> spattering around the marshes and the bayous and the <laughs> retention ponds and the oil fields. Sure. Right? Just country. <laughs> uh, a couple petrochemical oil plants <laughs> here and there. You know. Sprinkled around. Sprinkled around. Yeah. Um. Now, there's a uh, road called the Calder Road. And the Calder Road fields were owned by this petrol chemical company. And there's acres okay. and acres of land. And there's there's not much on it. And, you know, like I said, there was this spattering of houses and chemical camps. You know, like industrial, like kind of like um, in Denver. Um, Frick. Why am I going blank? The place when you drive on 270 and it's like industrial with oh, the Oh, yeah, the yeah. Chem Near like Globeville and stuff like that. Yeah, like, like gas blowing out of the thing yeah. and all of the, it's just like stinky industrial. Yeah, where know? the dog food purina plant yeah, is. Yeah, the gas plant. Yeah, so gross. The, it's just, yeah. Okay, but, so but less people, right? Yeah, exactly. It's so like it's super. Just, and the people that live there just probably don't have a lot of means because it's like cheap to live there. Sure. Because it's, no, not desirable. So it's real, it's just real sprawled out. So there, and then it was a great place for this horse riding company. There was a horse riding um, business there, okay. um, which was perfect because lots of land, sure. right? People to go riding horses. Easy access right off I-45. I-45. <laughs> um, tra some trailer homes spattered around a few hundred yards apart. Yeah. Uh, and there was this dead end road that just deaded into nothing. It was Calder. It's called Calder Road. Okay. And, you know, past the, that's how you got to the horse park and the trailers. And then it just deaded, dead ended. And, and this is where, you know, that, that petrol company owned these, these fields, these lands, right? And, what, and they probably is, buy everything around it to do. keep it away from the public. Yeah. So I worked in oil and gas. So there's okay. a huge, there's a huge like, um, uh, oil and gas companies will, buy up the rights or at least lease the land or buy up yes. land. Um, and Texas is like huge oil uh, country. Huge. So, so um, there's a lot of like owning land um, or owning the mineral rights. Yes. And when you're in uh, like, so you were talking about those horse, like mm -hmm. they probably, the horse folks probably rented yeah, from the land, the land from the, from the oil company. company. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. When was this? So now we're we're in the mid eighties. Okay, eighties. Okay, this is where this is where we are today. We're right now. Okay. Um. Now, just north of Calder Road was a small little housing development that was just starting to pop up. And until then, other than that riding horse on this small little you know business parcel and maybe a few trailers spattered here and there, there was really no reason to be out there. Mm -hmm. Like, because there was. Nothing out there. Yeah. Um, it was just very desolate. And so on April 6th, 1984, right in the mids, mid yeah. 80s, uh, there was this home. It was owned by this couple and they had a dog and a, a boy. Mm -hmm. And so the the boy and his dog, they got in their play and they're, they're one of these trailers. And they're going out and playing, and right on the um, you know edge of their or out at the edge of their property, it's kind of like marsh and swamp and forest, you know, trees and stuff. Yeah, right? it's kind of dense and, mm -hmm. and th thick. Out, it's kind of like plains, 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 and trees, 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 and marsh. Right. Okay. And so the boy is playing with his dog, 
and his dog runs into the into the woods and he figures he's just chasing a squirrel like he always does or some animal or he's like the dog's gonna come back sure soon. so the dog does in fact come back and he's got this like big ball in his mouth and the boy's like where did you get this ball <laughs> and then we're like uh-oh that's a skull shut up <laughs> oh my god well one okay couple things yeah <laughs> <laughs> How old was this boy? Like eight or something? Yeah, young, young, okay. young, young, young little boy. boy. So he's there. You don't really have, you're saying it's an early housing development, so it's not like they have a ton of. Well, he was in the trailer, so they're not even in the housing development. Okay, yeah, they're outside the, of they're the They're just housing. on the other, like the other side of the road near the, the horse area. There's some trailers spattered about. Mm -hmm. He's there. So he is there, and it's not like they have a ton of. You know, neighbors. So you're like, no. okay, it's not Halloween time. It's in April. Yeah. It's not like it's like a fake, you know, skull or yeah. whatever. It's no. a it's, it's a, a real, real skull. Life human skull. <laughs> Holy so like, shit! The could you imagine? Your no. Dog comes back with a human skull. Well, it's like that saying. Like anytime things look like, um, like like if it looks like a body or a mannequin, it's never just a mannequin. It's yeah. never a toy. It's yeah. Always, right. It's always something more macabre. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I could not imagine. So what happened? What did the boy do? I mean, shit. So he went tells his parents. His parents are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they call the police. The police end up finding a huge, the full skeleton. Oh my god! Just in the area. In the area. In that marsh area. Yeah, right up, right outside the little that right, <laughs> just right far from the trailer, in right in the set edge of the marsh. This is going to be called. This is going to become, excuse me, victim number one. Victim one. Oh, good God! That means that there's more than one. So now, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> when you start numbering things, yeah. Way to go, Alicia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking go figure. If there's one, it's victim number one. There's going to be more than one. Last. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. So on September of '84, okay. Laura Miller tells her dad that her boyfriend's going to come over. Is that okay? And her dad goes, sure. But we just moved into the house. This is in the housing development. Okay. We don't have our home phone hooked up yet. Because mm -hmm. um, back then we didn't have cell phones. We had landlines. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, her mom takes her to the convenience store on her way to work to the payphone, to use the payphone to call her boyfriend. And her mom's like, hurry up. I'm going to be late for work. And yeah. she's like, okay, I can talking to my boyfriend like you go to work i'll just walk home it's like half a mile sure like, no big deal yeah so she's like fine so later that night dad gets home no laura mom gets home Uh oh. no laura and they think oh, okay well she's still with her boyfriend right back in those days you couldn't just like yeah it's call like them up on their text, cell phone text her daughter like where are you yeah yeah her boyfriend rings the doorbell um, where's Laura? Holy shit. And the parents are like, oh my God, we thought she was with you. No, not with me. It's like, oh my God. So now everybody's panicking. Yeah, of course. It's so looking in nearby hospitals. There's absolutely nothing. They report it to the police. And unfortunately, the police know Laura as kind of a frequent runaway. Uh, how old was she again? Like 16? Yeah. Okay. And so the police go, <sighs> Duh, she's a runaway. Just wait by your phone. She'll call you back. Yeah. And, and by the way, there's no need to go to the media. You don't need to do the posters. Don't do all of that stuff. Just give it time. Yeah, just give it time. Just give she's it time. just a she's crazy gonna, kid. She's going to call you. Ugh. So they totally didn't take it seriously. So the issue is they should have because... They knew this wasn't the first report of a girl missing in the area. It turns out that there was this other girl, come to find out, named Heidi Faye, uh. who lived very close to where Laura lived, who had re been reported disappeared back in October of 83. <gasps> Still not found. What? And so they should have been like a little more on it. Yeah. Right? Like I get, okay, she's run away a hundred times, but- now you've seen these girls are starting to disappear. Like it's you need to take up. it a little bit. You need to go like, hmm. Well, and also there's a thing with like police officers where, you know, the family's like, no, no, no I know my kid. Right. Like, she, she's obsessed with her boyfriend. She's yeah. 16 years old. Like, right. 
yeah, she this her boyfriend n- came over and has not seen her. Yeah, so this, this is, is not, not normal. Normal. If anyone she did knew, not run away. No. Right. But they don't they don't take it seriously. They're they don't like, take no, it no, seriously. We know your child better than you do. That's <laughs> fucked. We've got up. more important things to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. So now Heidi Faye that I just talked about, she's in her early twenties. Early twenties, oh excuse me. She works at a place called the Texas Moon, which is like a bar. Okay. And she's a cocktail waitress. And so she's on her way to Houston to help her boyfriend with an apartment that he was fixing up. And she was going to work. um, Sorry, she was going to walk to the convenience store to call her boyfriend. Right. And so she could get coordinated right up to Houston because that's where her boyfriend lived. Mm Because Houston's not very far. But, uh uh-oh, she never shows up in Houston. And so the clerk at the store says that he saw her make a call from that same telephone booth that Laura was was going to use that used before (gasps) to call her boyfriend. And so the police then say, "Okay, well she's a runaway. Mm -hmm. She's a runaway too." Yeah. Wait by your phone. But she's she's no in need her to put posters out. No need to call. <laughs> she's in her mid twenties, helping out her boyfriend, who was very away. clear about like what she was going to do. Uh huh. But she's a she's definitely but she's a run away. Y'all, y'all. Fuck these police officers. Hate them. Hate them. Um. So, you remember that boy and his dog back in April of eighty yes, four with the with the ball victim that number was one victim number one. That was Heidi. That was Heidi. Heidi. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. So that so that was found April of 84. Oh shit. She- uh-huh. <laughs> Disregard. <laughs> yeah. She went missing in October of 83. Yep. So she had been missing for less yes. than a year. Yes, 11 months. Same exact area. Same. That then Laura, Laura, they both were on the same payphone. They're like, oh, yes. no, these are both just runaways. Yes. No, n- no thought nope. to anything else. It's no. like podunk. Like, like, duh. Bullshit. Duh. I, like, like, of course, we don't care about these women. That's, That's awful. it. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Young, poor, reckless women. We don't Which, care about. I mean, come on. Young and reckless should be synonymous. That's like the <laughs> really? same thing, honestly. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, being young and being <laughs> reckless, like that's where you figure out your <sighs> shit. That's where you decide. Exactly. And you discover Give whether or not. Give them a little break. Yeah, totally. Goddamn police. Oh, that sucks, Kevin. I sucks. hate this. I hate it. So Laura's father, he becomes like this dog with a bone. He is oh, like. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like, yep. I'm not letting this go. Nope. No, nor should he. Nor should he. Um, so the police tell him his case and Heidi's case were not connected. They're not connected. Bullshit. Chill out, dude. Not connected. He's like, wait a second. This like dude at the convenience store, he's a better um, he's a better uh a detective than these fucking detectives mm-hmm. are. Okay, sorry. Go yeah. On. And so the police say, and by the way, don't contact Heidi's family. What? No, don't discuss this with anybody else. What are... Don't contact them. You would think that the police want to help these people. They sucked ass. Okay, fuck these These guys. These police are awful. As I was researching this, and I just got more and more pissed at these people. Yeah, because they they weren't taking anything serious. No. It's like good old boys club, man. Not that big of a deal, right? And if, if it was a rich, if it was a rich girl, yeah, man, rich I'm little fine. white girl, privileged white girl, yeah, then that's yeah, fine. That's one thing. But eh, these these kids are, you know, yeah, living in trailers in the in the trashy in the shitty industrial oil area. <sighs> Some of them run away. <sniffs> Who cares? Oh, fuck them! Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So now we're in February of ninety six. Excuse me, February of eighty six. And so some boys are riding their bikes in the same area where the boy and his dog found that body back in 84. They find the skeleton of another woman. No. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And so while the police were investigating the crime, they came across yet another body. Another body in the same area? 25 yards away from that one. Shut up. Okay, wait a second. (sighs) Two? Well, coincidence. Uh, three, right? four, three? 
What? What the fuck? Uh-huh. You should be, you should have tractors and like a whole. You should CSI be going team. like, hey, FBI. Yeah, yeah. Help. Can you please help Need us? Some help. Yeah. Clearly we can't handle this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So both of their bodies are on their backs. They're under trees as if they had just been laid there. So they were. They weren't even covered? No. No. <gasps> the bodies are just laying just laid, out? Laid there. Just laying there. That takes some balls. Wow. Jane Doe shot with a 22 caliber bullet in the spine. Oh, my God. And they look at the third body and realize through dental records that they just found Laura Miller. So that was number three. Mm-hmm. So we have number one, victim mm-hmm. number one. We, we have- still have an unknown and Laura number and Laura Miller. Oh, my God. So they find this blue plaid Western shirt. Near Much Laura's like you're body. Wearing. Much like the one I am wearing right now. <laughs> and they didn't have DNA at this time. So as several of our stories we've talked about in the past, effing technology didn't exist. Right. Yeah. So, but they did tag the shirt. Um, And so they, but the shitty police department's the one they kept it. Of course. Okay, so now people are kind of, or the, it's like serial killer potential because you're right. <laughs> finding multiple bodies Mul- in the same location, similar, same kind of girl. Same. Oh, so they're all looking like similar. They're all similar, young girls. And then all of them are being disposed of similarly, right? Exactly. So like, so like this, sh- the, these are patterns. Yes, it's called a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> We know about Effing this. Police. Yeah. Pattern. Like serial killers are something that they should, they do know about. They should know about. Right. So it seems. They don't give so, a fuck. So it appears, well, someone's found the perfect dumping grounds. It's isolated. No one goes back there. No reason to go back <laughs> right. there. I can just dump all my bodies back here. So uh. then the locals start calling it the Texas killing fields. Oh my God. So could you imagine living in this area? I would be be petrified. I would be too. So now we're in 1971 and Houston is really, it's starting to, to really boom. There is a lot of work. There's a lot of growth, uh, which brings out all of the drifters and the criminals. I mean, this is when all, they all just kind of come swooping in. Mm Mm-hmm. And in November 7th of 71, two girls go missing. One's by the name of Maria Johnson. She's 15 years old. And Debbie Ackerman, also 15. They're best friends. Oh, no. And these girls are like 15-year-old girls wanting to, you know, it's a typical 15-year-old girl. And they can be a little... Um, what's the word? Um, bitchy, bitchy. Um, not using common sense. Of course. Um, as with kind of fifteen year old boy. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not fifteen year old children. It's like fifteen year old children. You yeah. just think that you know you think You're invincible. Can, yes. Yeah. I'm gonna Superhuman. go just do all this stuff. I mean, you're fifteen. That's that's the time when you're like. Doing some stuff. Some stupid shit. Yeah. Very making Jackass dumb stuff. decisions. Dumb decisions, of course. Yes. So these two girls, they want to go have a good time. It's the 70s. They're not smoking, surfing. Who yeah. cares? You know, it's like, no cares. I'm invincible. Yeah, hippie. Um, and on November 17th, 10 days later, they found a body. And the very next day, they find another body very oh, s- close no. by. And they found them in, in the this same pool field. of water. Oh. It's kind of similar, not in the fields, but close. And they find them in this pool of water, kind of like a marsh. Yeah. So now between 1971 and 77, we have 11 Young girls. 77. Being murdered in the Houston area. We're, we're, we're at 11 that we know of. Wow. This is that we that as we know of. 
And in this Houston area, specifically this southern little area down by Galveston, you know, west of 45, this place yeah. that I'm talking about. So between Houston and Galveston, 45, there's this, that area becomes this area of murder. Oh my of God. These poor, for these poor girls. No one has any answers. No one knows what's going on. Is it, There's no surveillance, right? We don't have surveillance. No. There's no we don't like, have cameras, license plate yeah. readers and all of this technology mm-hmm. that we have today. No DNA, all this crap. And the police stations, they don't share information. No, no, because they right? don't have egos. Exactly. And yeah. this is happening. So that whole area, there's like seven districts, you know, between... Mm-hmm. Houston and Galveston. And so when these girls go missing in these different um, district counties, whatever, they're not communicating with each other. So, you know, county number one goes, oh, we have a dead girl. And then county number two goes, oh, we have a dead girl. Little did they know they had 11. They had 11 dead girls and all the dead girls were similarly like, like they had similar, you know. I'm sure the way they were killed. Yeah, the way they were killed. Out. Yeah, laid out, not buried. Like that's mm-hmm. that's a huge fuck you to the police. Like mm-hmm. I don't even have to. Like you guys are so fucking stupid. Right. I'm just gonna put her here. Yeah, I'm just gonna put her here. It doesn't even matter. Like so blatant. And you have like women who are what is it from 15 to yes, mid 20s? Mid 20s. That's I mean that's what 10 years age difference. Which in that air then that time frame, right? That's yeah. just it seems it's just like. Bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah. Like it's a type. You, yeah, you would think that they would be, but they don't, of course not. They're not going to communicate with each other, which is part of the problem, right? That's the problem. Like they're not talking to each other, so they don't know. They don't know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know what's happening. So stupid. Oh, you know, I blame part of it on technology because we just didn't know any better, but because I think now, you know, you put it in a database and now everyone can see the database. So I think, I feel like that's better now, but still, I mean, still. You were just next. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're in the eighties. Okay. And because there had been a little bit of a, a lull. Oh, so they hadn't found any girls in these like fields. Yes. Yeah, so like between seventy seven, like oh, early eighties, okay. right? Because the between seventy one and seventy seven, that's when they found. That's when they had like these 11, 12 girls. Right. Six years. So then there's kind of like a little bit of a lull. Mm-hmm. And now we're in the 80s and the murders start again. Oh, great. But they're kind of in a different area of I-45, but still kind of in that the same that corridor. Same corridor. And this area is called League City, is what they call okay. it. Um and it's actually not far from the Calder Roads. Like really it's literally not far. I think it's just on either on the other side of 45 or just up or down. I can't remember, but it's still I mean it's just miles. I mean, yeah. it's just within this area, right? So, in, in 19... So, there's this guy named Clyde Hedrick. Mm-hmm. And in, in 86, this Clyde meets this woman. And she has two children. And one is this young girl. And this little young girl is named, is named Marla. And he says... He tells... Her and the family that, you know, he came from Florida to Houston as part of this housing boom, right? He needed work because he was a construction worker. Um, And so the the young girl's biological dad, because the mom was divorced, right? And she's meeting this Clyde guy. Well, the the girl's biological dad finds out that his ex-wife with who has his children is dating. So he goes, does a background check. On he, Clyde. On Clyde, because yeah. he's, you know, he he's wants like, to make sure that his kids are cool. Yeah, yeah. Who's around my children? Who's around my children, mm-hmm. right? So he goes, he does a background check, finds out Clyde was in prison in Florida for assault. Oh. And he was in jail in Texas for what they called abuse of a corpse. <laughs> Okay, can I, okay, couple things. First thing. Few. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> so, one, good on this dad. Good like, for him, like, yeah. Good for you to be like, okay, you know, not that I don't trust your judgment, but like, these are my children. Stranger's gonna be around my kids. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to make sure that they're okay. Exactly. That should be a rule for everyone. Agreed. Hey, 
if you have children, yeah. you have an ex, yeah. make sure you do a fucking background check. Totes. Like spend the fucking 20 bucks on it. Totes. It's worth it. Yeah. Clearly, if Clyde has had an assault in Florida and then he has like, like what was it with like, a corpse? Have you ever heard of this? Abuse of Abuse a corpse. Abuse of a corpse. Like why is he around a corpse? <laughs> I'm going to tell you later. Oh my God. This, this dude is a fucking piece of shit. No normal person has a charge of abuse of a corpse. No, I'm like, unless you work at like a mortuary and you you forgot that they were outside or something. I don't know. I'd be like, oh, oops, I forgot I was supposed to put him in the cre- in the crematorium or whatever, and it fucking didn't. I put him in my car. incinerator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just sat outside for a little bit, got a little warm. Like Bernie. that's abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, Bernie. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Wow. Bernie's abuse of a corpse. You know, Bernie. Anyway. Yes, yes. When they were pretending like he was still, what was it? Weekend, weekend, weekend with, with Bernie. Bernie. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's abuse of a corpse. <laughs> okay. God. So we're going to flash back to July of 84. Okay. This is three months before Laura's disappearance. And a woman by the name of Ellen Beeson goes missing. Now, Candy, her BFF, takes her to that bar I was telling you about, Texas Moon. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that the other girl had been a cocktail waitress at. exactly. Victim number three. Yes. Yeah. That's where she meets, or she meets Clyde Hedrick, and they hit it off, okay? Well, Candy can't find Ellen the next morning. What? And so she and the police, because she reports it, asks Clyde, where is Ellen? And he says, well, she just left the truck. She just left with some friends, and she just kind of ditched me at the bar. (sighs) And so weeks go by. And her friend, Candy, is getting completely worried. But she some, somehow she th- keeps thinking, you know, Clyde, there's something. Clyde, come on, Clyde, something's happening. Yeah. Tell me what's happening. And she's, she's just hounding him and hounding him and hounding him. And she's doing this constantly because she, she knows he knows something. And finally, he's had enough. And in this heated argument, he says to her, fine, you want to know where she is? I will show you where she is. And he puts candy in the car and they drive. Now, first of all, if I was candy, I'd be shitting myself. Well, candy clearly Why did she get in the car. Well, because she is probably like, there's some, she's, she's a dog. She's a dog with a bone. Right? She's a dog with a bone. She's like, I know my best friend. Which we all want a fucking best friend like Candy. Mm-hmm. Hashtag yes. get me a best friend like Candy. Hell to the yes. Candy, candy for your best friend, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But like honestly, like you want a best friend who's like, I'm I don't believe you. Right. There's something else going on Hells here. Hells yes. Tell tell me. Like uh, I don't yes. I think at that point it's like she knew. She was like, I don't give a shit. I'm going. You're I'm, gonna show me where she's You're gonna is. show me where the fuck she is because you're yeah. fucking hot or yeah, or excuse me. Yeah. Candy's Ellen. gonna show Ellen. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Clyde's going to show Candy, Candy where, where Ellen, Ellen is. is. Yes. And she's so concerned. She's not even thinking of her own mm-hmm. well-being. Because, of course, the last thing you would think is, like, maybe this dude's, like, killing people. Right. I I would think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause That's your last maybe thought. In your, yeah, exactly. Because your first thought might be, oh, well, we had an accident, an accident, and he knows where she is, but he's just not saying because he's scared. You know, it could have been a lot of things, but it wasn't. There are some red her. flags with this dude. But there's red flags. Yeah. He drives her to a location that is this entry to this like kind of road road bridge area to Gal to Gal what they call Galveston Island, and it's this isolated dirt road. And he gets there there, and he moves some tires, <laughs> and he goes, "See there she is," and there was Alan Beeson underneath the tires, not even buried. I guess I guess she had something over her, which were tires. And he tells Candy, if you tell anyone, guess what's happening to you? And so he gets, puts her back in the car. Oh, my God. And they leave. And they go about their business. Now, Candy, can you imagine no. what's going through her brain? No. Just on that, on that drive back, one, 
oh my God, you just saw your best fucking friend. Yes. Like dead. Dead underneath some effing tires. Okay, that's shock, right? (laughs) Trauma. Trauma. So much. Trauma. But then on top of that, he's like, get back in the car. Yes. And I'm going to drive you back. You're not going to say shit to anyone. I'd be fucking, I'd be like, well, I have to get back in the car. Uh Uh-huh. There's no other way for me to get back. Yep. That drive must have seemed like it was ours. Eternity. Yeah. Wow. So that's just chewing on her brain. Six months goes by. Six months and she hasn't said anything. Ten said a word. Wow. She's had She's enough. Terrified. She can't do it anymore. It's eating her up. She finally goes to the police. Good for her. You go, Candy. At least she did it. Yes. So the police go to Clyde. Clyde tells the police now what had happened was that they'd gone out swimming into this water. And they went skinny dipping. And... He dives down, and when he comes up, she's just floating in the water. No. Yep. Doesn't know what happened to her. And so he panics. He puts her in the back of the truck, and then on the way to the hospital, he's like, I got to ditch this body because I don't want to be suspected of foul play. (gasps) So I'm going to just put her under some tires. Because that makes sense. What kind of person... Are you dealing with who goes, hmm, I don't want to be suspected of foul play, so I'm going to take a dead body and put them under tires. Well, Kevin, boys will be boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's um, what that's what this like reeks of is boys will be boys. Like, well, some mishap. So he just did what he thought was best. Mm-hmm. He didn't hurt anyone. No. That's but she's actually up. just a piece of garbage and trash. I'm putting her some tires. Yeah, yeah. She's not rich. She doesn't have rich parents. So it's no. not like we're like you just, should even care that much. Just it's disposable. Totally she's yeah. dead anyway. Super. Yeah. She, she's dead. And like, I did tell you about it. I did confess that this no. is what happened. Right. You don't see any marks on her body, do you? Right. Right. Okay, so let's talk about that. Yes, please. So the only Ugh. charge they could put on him at this point was dumping of a body. Right. Illegal, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Now, that equated to abuse of a corpse. Because they, because there aren't, there's like no marks. There's no, like, what do you charge him with? There's nothing, you can't charge him with, they don't know if he's murdered her. They can't prove that he's murdered like invo- Well, that's true. No, she's already dead. Yeah, she was already dead. So they had dead. to find something. The only thing they could have was abuse of a corpse. So next Ugh. time you hide a dead body, Alicia, yes. just know that is abusing a dead corpse. And do abusing it in Texas. Corpse. Not a dead corpse. A and, corpse, sorry. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, be, be in Texas. In Texas. Right. Don't. And be d- a white man. Right. 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 So he's convicted of, he's convicted, Uh $2,000 fine, (laughs) but he serves a year in prison. I shouldn't say but, only a year in prison. Okay, so after that, he's free. Okay, so what makes evidence gathering so difficult in Texas is that the Gulf Coast has very severe weather. They have hurricanes, floods, winds oh yeah they have all these marshes with so much water and so much heat yes and so when they put these bodies out there they just decay at such a a rapid pace that evidence washes away can't it's very difficult to judge time of death it's just the conditions are just awful yeah for this and so that's what that's what makes it so hard but so great for these serial killers. Right. Because one, there's a shitload of space. And then also you have all of the, all of this like extreme weather that mm-hmm. they can kind of take advantage of. Mm-hmm. And podunk piece of shit, like, you know, police officers who are not talking to each other and have egos the size of right. Texas. That doesn't help anything. No. Uh, okay. So everything is just kind of being great for these serial killers. Of course. It's like perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So you remember Tim Miller? That was Laura's dad. The guy yes. with the bone. Uh-huh. The guy with the bone. Well, he's still on the hunt. 
Oh, because he's still trying with to the figure dog out. With the bone. He's still yeah. trying to figure out who killed Laura. He knows that Laura's like like yeah. they found the body. Yeah, he knows he's, she's dead. But now he's got to like who the hell did it? Yeah, good old Tim. Well, he's getting nowhere fast with the police. Well, he learns of Ellen's case, <laughs> and he learns of this Clyde piece of S O yeah S. So he's hot on his trail. He's like, okay, got a new target. Yep. Um. And in fact, what made it even more so was that Tim had come across his name when he was researching it because he was kind of associated with this Texas moon bar, like, because he had been there, right, right? Right, And so he hadn't heard of his name before, and now this, and he's like, aha, there's my dude. Yeah. Four more years go by. Now, 1991. <laughs> happens again. Couple's out on horseback, riding through a wooded kind of a wooded area and it's by where that horse ranch was. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. And they smell something awful Ugh. and they look and they find this decomposing body under a tree in the exact same area as the other three, oh my Heidi, Laura and Jane Doe, which they <laughs> still haven't figured out Jane Doe. Um, so now they've got a force. So they call her Janet Doe. So now we're like, Okay, are we have the same killer, or is it someone else who now knows that this is the perfect dumping ground? So now I'm going to dump my bodies there. So now we have just a pile of victims in this area with all these killers because they know it's the perfect dumping ground. Like they're not sure. Yeah, which which is what's which really is happening? It? Which is it? But. The mo they're being placed unless like okay I don't know I don't know if you know this but. Unless it's being incredibly clearly like drawn out in like a news article or something, they're they how they're being placed. They're being placed underneath a tree. There's no yeah, burying of right. these bodies, right? Which is a huge fuck you and a huge laziness and like a like like that's not unless everyone is doing the same thing and trying to be the same serial killer. Like yeah. That that to me sounds like a fucking pattern. It does. You would you would think. You would yes. That's what I would think. That's what I would think. I mean, we're that's why we're talking about it today, right? That's right. <laughs> so Jane and Janet Doe aren't matching any cases in the area or any dental records that they could find. The League City Police was this tiny little thing with limited resources who sure. just you know just didn't have. They just couldn't handle all of this. And by this time in 90, now we're 91, right? Yeah. As I said, they did start getting this DNA testing. Now this was starting to become a thing. Right. Um, but this evidence wasn't kept well, of, of course, course, because I, they didn't know it was a thing. So, uh, you know, keeping it the way that they do today, I, I kind of get that. Yeah. I temperature control it. also. Just not in a, just some paper bag yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're just hoping that there's still DNA available. And, yeah. and also it's like, you know, they probably had like a police force of what, like 10? Yeah. Probably of nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So finally the FBI steps in. I mean, the League City was so incapable of making any progress. And they were getting a lot of pressure from the citizens. Right. <laughs> we've had how Hello, many bodies? we've had this many bodies. And yeah. where are we? Over, wait, 11, 12, 13. A long time. Years yeah. and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Same place. It's not like, and, and I'm sure that small housing development that was there is now becoming getting bigger. So bigger. it's like, so more people are like, Dude, there, there's someone killing and dumping bodies in our backyard. Right, literally. Uh, we're not okay with this. Right. And so they get a pro. So the FBI is now involved. So they get they have the profilers mm -hmm. and stuff, um, and they get them together. They get this profile together, um, and they actually these pro this profile fits this guy who lives on Calder Road, <laughs> and this profile suggests that the Killer lives close, that he would keep killings of the, keep clippings of the case, had a superior okay. attitude, and would have trouble or <laughs> relation, troubled relationships with women. <laughs> oh. Do you, do you, do you think? 
<laughs> really? Huh, FBI. I don't think that we needed a profiler <laughs> to figure that one out. <laughs> so we have this man who owns this property that touches the killing fields who is very smart, who has had bad relationships, has reports of him hitting and abusing animals. Oh, no. That's always one. Yes, yeah, the start, right? Yeah. So the FBI goes, oh, hmm, this could be your dude. Yeah. So a man by the name of Robert William Abel, who was a former NASA scientist, owns the horse property. That horse horse stables that I was telling you about. Uh-huh. But he he's always been willing to help the police. This like like this all anytime they've come to yeah. talk or you do whatever, he's always willing to help them. Sure. Guys had like many wives. Um one of the wives said he was gonna kill her if he didn't have sex with her as much as he wanted. <laughs> One said that he would beat horses, and then when the horses would die, he would just dump them out in the field. Oh, my God. Kind of like the girls. Right. So, you know, they're kind of making, now we're making assumptions and going, okay, well, can't not ignore him. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a huge, <laughs> mm-hmm. he has he has quite a few of our, uh, <laughs> yeah, he takes got, a lot of the boxes <laughs> yeah, off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cooking a lot of the boxes. <laughs> um. So now Clyde was put on the back burner because now okay. we're like, okay, now we got Robert. The NASA scientist. Yeah. Yes. Um, so League City Police Department writes this affidavit, the affidavit for a search warrant because they want to go search Robert's pad. Go what can we find? Yeah. So they did find some odd things. They found the newspaper articles about the killings. Which the profiler said. Check. They find guns. One of them was a twenty-two. Oh, which matches what that check. Yeah. Check. Check. <laughs> they found human teeth with gold crowns. And that's that's weird. That's really weird. But then you start thinking about it. You go, well, if I had teeth with gold crowns and they came out first I, I wouldn't throw them away i have like a would you throw tooth. would you throw away a gold crown tooth no probably not but like i also had a wisdom tooth pulled and i have it still me too okay because <laughs> i was like freaked out i'm like i feel weird about you taking my tooth. totally i made roy <laughs> go back and get it did you fact. yes because <laughs> yeah. he left without it i said we got to go back and get yeah, it it's kind of weird yeah was super weird <laughs> so maybe it's maybe it's more normal so i think i so when i started thinking i'm like okay i don't think and when i started thinking through it yeah, I'm like I don't know that that one is necessarily so weird. weird. So or weird. we're just weird. And like, in context, you go like, "Oh my god, he's creepy." But out of you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's something we can relate to. Can relate to. Yeah. So, oh my god, my dogs are going crazy. Going crazy. Okay, so the reality is they really didn't have any evidence. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, that 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 was all nothing. Ple- clippings, kind of weird. Yeah. But the guns, eh, I have guns. Sure. Teeth, eh, I have teeth. Yeah. And you're in Texas, like, of course people would have guns there. Right. Six more years go by. Yeah. We're now in 80, 97. <laughs> and on a- in April, April 3rd, actually, Laura Smithers, a 13-year-old, is reporting missing oh, after no. she went out from her, for a run and didn't come back. Now she lives in this town called Friendswood, and this is a small, another small town that's just right off that I forty four corridor. Right, same area. Same area. Now, unlike the other missing girls, the police took this report and they ran with it immediately as an abduction. I mean, they just took it. <sighs> Media, volunteers, uh, Marines. Um, I mean, there were thousands, literally thousands of people at one point in time, out searching for Laura. <laughs> I mean, and the community is like, why now? Why? Yeah. Why now? Well, it's <laughs> coincidentally, Laura comes from a good family, good little Christian girl, a white girl, good family. Mm-hmm. 
middle class, goes to church. So now we care about Laura. We care about Laura because she could be our daughter. Uh huh. Right. Like <laughs> irritating. <laughs> so irritating. She's also another thing is like she's thirteen, right? Yes. So that's a lot younger. Well, I yeah, guess it's the other two one years was younger. That was the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So as I was saying, so like, so the everyone's perception is okay. Well, Laura Miller was just this known runaway, and yeah. Heidi was just this loose cocktail waitress, right? And sure. Marie and Debbie were just the bad girls who were surfing and smoking and <gasps> doing drugs, and so it was really it was. I mean, they were of course everyone was happy. They're looking for this right. Laura number two, but still. The fact there's a lore fact, too. Yeah. yeah. So the police discovered that there was this white truck in the area at the time of her of her disappearance. But nothing really comes of the, the investigation. Mm -hmm. So was it like 18 days later? This is the 21st of April, right after the... So we were on April 3rd. Now we're on April 21st. A man and his son are taking their dog out to play near this retention pond. And the dog finds something. And they go and look. And they think it's just like some awful dead animal. Oh um, except God. they notice some socks. <gasps> oh, God. And they quickly identify her as Laura number two, Laura Smithers. Oh, that's so sad. Now, she was found in an entirely different area than called colder fields i mean it was still in the corridor but it wasn't it, was it wasn't like way south yeah and due to all of that decomp they couldn't determine how she died her death Ugh. and that was only like what two weeks 14 four five six seven just over two between two and three weeks decomp that fast that's what i was saying about the weather yeah it's really bad it's bad it just the heat and the moisture and it just made everything awful so a reporter does a report in the local paper, and now people are realizing there are 35 unsolved missing girl mysteries in in this three-county area. 30 freaking five. And the fact they could, like, have, like, the, the full 35, like, that means that they there are, uh, like, huge similarities between them, right? Like these are people who look similar, you know, they all have like similar young girls, MOs. young yes. girls, similar MOs, you know, whatever the case is, it they're the it's easy to add all these things up. These, you know, the it's not like a natural death, right? Like clearly. Like none of these girls are like, oh, she just went out on a run and had a heart attack. It's like she's right. thirteen years old. Yes. And the fact that there's fucking thirty thirty five and the People weren't putting this all together until this reporter did this report and let told everybody. Oh my god! Right. W where's Tim? Right. Come on, Tim. Tim. Tim is like Tim's like. Oh yeah, no, no. Up, I actually, it's not thirty five. <laughs> it's actually like fifty seven. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I've been telling the fucking police officers. <laughs> right. Uh, Tim and this reporter, they need to, they need to send shop. They need to hook. Mm -hmm. So the police decide they need to figure out who all the sex offenders are in the area. This is where they decide they're going to start. Right. Turns out there were thousands. Always. Always. Thousands. Yep. <laughs> Let's so narrow like, it down. Start? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so remember that story I told you about the woman with her two kids that met Clyde yes. at the bar? Yeah, with the father who got the background yes. check. Uh huh. Yeah, so to, prior to the girls running that background check, um, Clyde Hendrick takes the kids to this, to the pool. And we learn about this from the daughter later. Okay. He tells the girl, Marla, Marla, I was going to say Marla. Uh, yeah. Hey, Marla, look under the water. And so she does totally has a raging heart on. This is oh. a tiny little girl. Ugh. disgusting. He's a fucking gross, gross. piece of shit. Gross. Gross. I was like, what? There's a dead body in there? No. No. Ugh. Just so she runs back to the apartment with her brother, tells her mother. And then, so the mother and Clyde get into this big fight. As they should. But ultimately doesn't believe her daughter. <gasps> that is an unforgivable Unforgivable. I am sorry. Unforgivable. 
you believe you believe children believe victims when they fucking tell you something hell yes how the fuck does she know marla doesn't know what the hell that is her mom's a little wacky that's why that's why the father felt like okay i need to do a fucking background te- uh, check because i don't trust her i don't trust my wife <laughs> yeah. my ex my ex that's why we're exes now totally Ah, uh, what a Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Marla. I'm sorry your mom was a piece of shit. I felt so bad for her. That's She was destroyed. You go to your parents and you expect that they're going to believe you about things, yes, right? Like, yes. you want them to, like, hey, I had this thing that happened. Like, you want your parent to be there and to protect you. Yes. And Marla's mom fucking blew it. She blew it. Ugh. Ugh. Fuck you, Marla's mom. Yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. So in 88, two years after that event, Marla moves out of the house. She goes to college. Her mom tells her that she finally leaves, left Clyde. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And her mom says, I need you to come back here because I need to show you something. So they, he takes her back to the trailer. Well, this trailer was destroyed. Like it was just. Like, so, I don't, it can't even describe it. Like, I saw pictures of it. It was just like, imagine someone, it just uninhabitable. It felt uninhabitable to me. So what? Like, you know it was how like, people live? Like, just a mess. Just like hoarders? Mess. Hoarders and, like, nothing was picked up. And, like, I don't know. I'm making this up. But, like, you smoke a crack pipe and you burn the curtain. And, you like, the microwave is, like, caked with shit. And, I mean, it was just gross, disgusting. Filth. Just filth. And so her mom shows her this spot on her wall in her old bedroom. And there was a fucking hole in her wall where her mom now realizes Clyde was watching her. Oh, huh. Huh. Now you can believe her. Right. What? Okay. So this, so the trailer that they lived in, Mm -hmm. it was Marla's, Marla's mom's trailer. Yes. So this film. This is where she kind of grew up. And then she went to college. She went to college. And in that time, it, all that it filth happened. It just got gross. Yeah. It got really gross. Yeah. Marla comes comes back and yes. sees this fucking sees hole. And his mom, her mom's like, mm, yeah. sorry. Sorry. You were right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I guess you were right. He, he, he was looking at you. It's like, oh, cool. Did you really have to fucking tell me? Uh-huh. Like, did you have to show me this? Like, Marla's mom sucks. Yeah. Like, that's such an understatement. No bueno. Oh, I hate her. Okay. Yeah, not good. So her mother also tells her there was a time when Clyde left for a a while. And then he comes back covered in blood (laughs) with a bloody knife and tells her, I did it again. I did it again. (laughs) I (laughs) she asks no questions. Well, of course she she asks no questions. Of course she has no questions. Because she's an awful person. Yes. And like something's not right in her head. No, no, there's clearly something wrong. But like, don't get me wrong, was she probably a victim? Is there a reason that she is that way? Exactly. Probably. Yes. But you know what? She's a fucking adult yeah. who can make adult decisions. Hopefully. You did not protect your child. I no. have no I, I do not tolerate that. Right. Period. Right. Fuck you. You're a piece of shit person. You don't protect your child. Two. Yeah. A man comes home with a bloody knife, goes, I did it again, and you don't say anything? You're like, you're like, huh. Don't ask, don't tell. What's on TV? That's the that is the that is the definition of don't ask, don't tell. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Oh. But does there have to be uh, something wrong with you? Oh, oh, she's she is something's wrong. Yeah. I don't know if she's a beaut. I don't I don't know. I don't care because she's a piece of shit. Yeah. Not good. It's not good. That's why Clyde's <laughs> with her. He can find can control. Yes, yes, exactly. He's yes, exactly why he's he with her. finds someone that he can be this way with. Yep. Oh my God. So now we're July 15th of 97. This is three months after Laura Smithers was found. Mm. Kellyanne Cox in her early twenties disappears in Denton, Texas. She gets locked out of her car and she makes a call on a payphone at a nearby convenience <gasps> store to get help. That's the last time anyone heard from her. Is it the same convenience store? I'm not sure. I think it is, but I'm not <gasps> sure. Can we, like, what they should have is some kind of, I don't know, sign up t- telling the clerks, 
if there's a woman mm-hmm. here Calling on a pay phone? using that payphone, <laughs> yeah. take a picture or tell her. Uh huh. Don't you know use what? the payphone. Don't use the payphone. Come on in here. You can use our phone. Exactly. Don't, you don't have to pay for it. Right. We, we've already had like four people die who, <laughs> who use, use that, that fucking payphone. payphone. <laughs> there should be like a, a like some kind don't of use this. Take, yeah, take out, how about a sign? Let's take out the payphone. Yeah, just just get rid of it. <laughs> let's get rid of the payphone. <laughs> if you're a woman, you need to use this payphone. Just come on inside. Right. We, we'll pay for it. <laughs> it's exactly. okay. Oh my god. Oh. So eleven days later, July twenty sixth. Tiffany Johnson, who is 19, disappears. I knew it. Now I'm going to throw a twist in here. Okay. This is in Oklahoma. And you're going to go, why are we talking about Oklahoma? Yeah, right. It's not Texas. Just hold. Okay. Just pause. (laughs) Okay. Okay. She was 16? She's 19. 19. She disappears disappears from this local car wash. The next day, she's found in this tall grass just off of Interstate 15. This is in Oklahoma, just west of the car wash. And she had been strangled and raped and killed. They found some DNA. Oh, okay, good. All right. They're doing DNA now. Right, right. But they didn't have a match. They couldn't find a match. Because they have a database. So there's a database. Now they're starting to build this database. Yeah. Okay, jump to August 17th of 97. So we were July, now we're in August. This is four months after Laura Smithers. Jessica Kane, 17, from what they call Tiki Island, Kansas, she disappears. Oh, my God. So Laura Smithers' family, they start helping with the search. Now all these girls' families are starting to help because they're like, this is effed. There's something up, and we think they're all connected. They're all connected. Yeah. And now Laura's dad's there helping, Tim. Good old Tim. Community's getting together. Everyone's getting together. Susan, who is the girl that Clyde exposed himself to. Right. She's helping. She's like, okay, this is F. Yeah. Um, And it actually turned out, although this is just kind of a side note. Susan or Marla? So Marla was the mom. Marla was the mom. Oh, okay. Susan was the daughter. Okay. This girl was like three degrees separated from Susan. And it's like, it's, it doesn't, it's not related, but it just, it just so happened that this girl that goes missing was just like three degrees, like her brother's best friend's sister or kind of something like that. It's like, like a that. weird coincidence. It's a weird coincidence. Okay. So now everyone is still thinking Robert Abel is this killer. Mm-hmm. And the in, NASA scientist. And in fact, who... Tim Miller, dog with the bone. Right. Is getting really aggressive to Robert. And he's trying to make the police do things like dig on his property, serve him search warrants. He's like getting really aggressive. And he even starts torm Tim starts tormenting Robert with voicemails. And one of the voicemails is actually is was like verbatim. I was going to hire some guys to take you to Vegas and beat the shit out of you the entire way there and finally kill you once they got you there. So now Tim, is like he's thinking he's on the righteous path. Like right. he's he's yeah, like going after this died. murderer. Yeah, his daughter died years ago, and nothing's. He hasn't had he any has kind of tunnel vision. Of course he does. He's yeah. he's in mourning. He's yes. grieving. Yes, and he doesn't have any area to put this att- this attention right. aside from trying to get like retribu- retribution or right. you know uh, on behalf of his daughter. Exactly. That's exactly. tragic. You know, the biggest part of you goes, I understand. Yeah. Is he doing it the right way? Is he doing it the no, right way? Probably not. Negatory. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he even goes as far as bringing cadaver dogs to this guy's property to oh, try, try to smell is for a dog c- with a bone. Right. Wow. Um, they find a woman's clothes and purse. And so they're like, What? But they couldn't prove who these things belong to. Right. I'm assuming there's no identification or anything right, on the inside right. of it. It's just a purse. And so now Robert is completely effing terrified of Tim. I would, even if I was a murderer, I would be scared of Tim at this point. Because like I said, this guy, Tim's going nuts. Yeah, Tim Tim fucking is not going to stop. He's not stopping. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now Robert orders a file, order files an order of protection against Tim. Because Tim's getting like a little cray cray. Yeah. And so this Robert Abel has had enough. So he has to sell his property 
because it's like getting nuts. Yeah. And Tim's making such a stink out of it that all the people around now think it's Robert. Right. So Robert is like focused on. It. So he has to sell his property, sells his horse ranch, moves out of League City. It's like gots to go. So now a few months back in April, I'm jumping back to April, uh, yeah. May 19th. This is three months before Jessica disappears. Uh, a woman by the name of Sandra Sapa had been at this convenience store <laughs> and a man was standing there watching her. And when she comes out, he walks up to her and he says, do you need help? And she says, why would I need help? And he goes, oh, well, that's because you got a flat tire. <gasps> and... No. Uh huh. And within a few minutes, boom, he's got a knife at her throat, forces her in the truck. He rapes her in this truck oh. and then takes her and speeds down I 45. Well, she's like, F this. I know too much that if I get, you know, too far, then I'm, I'm, you know, dead. I, I'm dead. She jumps out of that car. God she bless you, Sandra. Jumps right out of that car. Damn, running down the highway. Now she's in really bad shape, but she makes it to this Waffle House where she has them call 911. Oh my God. So she jumped out of the car uh -huh. and, and then walked to, to a fucking Waffle, waffle house. house. Yeah. Sandra's a goddamn yeah. hero. She's tough. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Sandra. So the pol so she gets the police station and describes this man about having a receding hairline. He's got these big bags under his eyes and a cowboy hat, white, middle-aged. And if I put this on, that exactly describes me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she describes the truck to the police. It's a white pickup. And they realize, wait a minute, we've heard of a white pickup before. Yeah. That was Laura Smithers case. Right. Sm yeah, Smithers, a 13-year-old who was running. So Sandra goes to the perp lineup. And she locks on to him. She goes, I, that's him right there. And it's a by, but it's a guy named Bill Reese. And they're like, hmm, who's Bill Reese? Yeah, who is Bill Reese? So Bill Reese was one of the thousands of sex offenders that was on the list. So he came to work in Texas. And when they, that whole boom thing was happening, and they're like, okay, well, now is he... The caller road killer. Yeah. But I mean, you have a victim who's saying he raped me. Right. Taking he, me in his white truck. In his white truck. I jumped out, walked like that's that's like some damning evidence against someone. Totally. You know, she she if, if somebody won, she remembers the whole story at the convenience store was raped has this incredible like incredibly awful experience. Yes. Of course, you're going to believe her. Of course. She has the lineup. She's able to to point the person out in a second. Pop the guy like that. Yeah. Ugh. So, but no. Bill was in prison on a 10-year sentence for rape in Oklahoma at the time the Calder murders happened. So it couldn't be him. Okay. So now we're like, do we have two serial killers? Right. That's what I would be thinking. In the area. As we mentioned before, maybe one finds out about this dumping ground and goes, ah, perfect place for my hobby. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Bill was actually on the police's radar just a few days after Laura Smithers' body was found in that retention pond. They search his house. They find a black cowboy hat. And they arrest him for her abduction. He completely denies it, goes, uh-uh. Um, but he was working in the same subdivision that Laura Smithers lived in. And so they are 100% sure. That it's, him. that it's him. And in fact, he was dropped off in that area by his boss the same exact time that Laura had left for her little run. Oh. And the uncommon, there's these fibers on his truck mat were, I guess, uncommon. They mat, those fibers in his truck matched the fibers on Laura's socks. So, so they're like, clearly. Has to be built. Clearly. Yeah. Um, and so then they also think, well, he's responsible for Jessica Kane, Jessica Kane's murder, but they can't, you know, clearly find enough right. to link him. Well, in 1998, Bill is sentenced to 60 years for that kidnapping, for that that she the, the kidnapping of that woman that escaped. Right. 
In 2000, Tim Miller, he starts a company called Texas EquiSearch. And his primary focus is helping these families with these missing girls. Yeah, of course. Um, so and he does it free search. of charge. Of course he would. Of course he would. Yeah. So he, um, his daughter had, you know, died, yep. was murdered. Yep. So equine search, I'm assuming that's on horseback. Yes, he, yes, yeah. he does use that. Oh, use yeah, horses. Yeah, horses to, mm -hmm. to search for, in this specific area for, uh. Yes, for the missing girls and any clues oh. that he can help with. And now in 2005, remember Robert Abel, the guy yes. that he was With a NASA pounding? scientist, mm -hmm. yeah. Who sold his land because Tim was like fucking going crazy on him. Uh -huh. Kills himself by driving his golf cart onto train tracks. Now, he was always considered the killer in the, right. the League City just by public opinion, really. Right. Um, and Tim was so um, utterly aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> right. To she Robert. Said, yeah. Well, now through all of this, Tim's convinced it's not him. Ugh. And so now Tim is like, oh, fuck. Like, what What did like, I do? What did I do? I, I killed, I kind of was like a big reason why someone killed themselves well that would be some heavy ass shit i mean let's let's face it robert wasn't a good person no robert was an awful person yes but tim you need to reel it in and go to therapy yeah tim there needs are to some reel issues it in. we can we can we can like re um we can we can put some of that energy towards like positive things like this equine search like that's yes. a great thing perfect you let's don't need to like that. drive someone to suicide okay <laughs> Okay, so Tim, now he's probably, he takes Marla to the killing fields, and he's like, see if you can remember stuff as a kid. Yeah. Try to figure, try to remember some stuff. Uh-huh. Once she's there, she sees this water pipe and kind of has this flashback. And she, Marla says, Clyde took her. She goes, I, she's taken me, he's taken me to Calder Road before because in the 90s, because I remember these pipes. <sighs> And she vaguely remembers Clyde doing a mowing job for somebody on this on a property that was nearby. Yeah. And she saw him digging and working there. And so now Marla is 100% convinced that Clyde is, the, is killer. the killer. Yeah. And so now all the focus goes back to Clyde Hendricks. Now that Abel's died, killed himself. Right. There, yeah. There's nothing you can really do with yeah. that. So, okay. Go back to Clyde. Yeah. So his record continues to grow even after he spends a year in prison for abuse of a corpse. Right. Let me tell $2, you two thousand dollars in abuse of a corpse. Let me tell you the list of things, please. We have enticing a child, criminal trespass, DWI, terroristic threat, evading arrest, assault, a driving driver's license suspension, possession of a controlled substance, theft, criminal mischief. Attempted arson, theft of a motor vehicle. The list goes on. He's all over. All over the place. It's not just like this. It's like he has arson. <clears throat> he has stealing. He has, he has, uh, you know, fucking with a corpse. He has um, mischief. Like, it, it, like <laughs> you name it, you name an area, that dude's been tried for it. He's tried it. <laughs> what the fuck? And he's probably tried it way more because he was only caught these times. Hells to the yes. Exactly. What? He's exactly. like a total heathen. He is awful. Yeah. So in 2012, the FBI forms this kind of ad hoc, ad hoc force task force. Uh, and they reopen the Ellen Beeson case. Remember the girl yes. that was under the tires? Yes. So. Who candy her best friend. Right. And he. Put he, her there because he they was were scared. swimming. They were swimming, and she was just cute. unconscious. I don't want to be accused of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. And the and the police are like, "Okay, bro, we see you. Mm -hmm. We get it." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is really the only thing they can link to Clyde for sure. Yeah. So they exhume the body. Turns out, girlfriend had a massive skull fracture. <laughs> And they're like, this. How was that not found? This is the cause of death. Yeah. Girl was beaten to death. Yeah, bludgeoned. So they bring Clyde in to interview. And they tell him this fact. Mm -hmm. And he said, quote, I've never hurt anyone death-wise. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that? What? That's a qualifier. <laughs> He's qualifying <laughs> the hurting people. Oh, no, no, no. Like, Not yeah, death no. Death wise. Yeah. I've never hurt anyone death wise. Like, have I hurt people? Yeah. <laughs> Has it been death wise? Yeah. No. Like, okay, Clyde, what the fuck does death wise mean? Dude is clearly he's, not there. He's not there. He's not there. <laughs> death wise. Death wise. So he says, maybe she hit her head. I don't know. I was underwater. And when I came up, girl was floating. Maybe she hit her head on something. I don't know. She hit her head on a wave. <laughs> on a wave. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. made that up. <laughs> She's like, she was diving in a shallow area of the pool. In like, the middle of the water. Yeah. And yeah. she hit her head. And it happened so quickly that by the time I found her, by she was totally dead. By the time I got up from the water, yeah. she was dead. Yeah, there's... Clyde, shut up. Clyde, I swim. Okay, Clyde. <laughs> I know I cannot hold my breath for that long <laughs> for someone to die in that period of time. Yeah. No. No. Not death wise. No. Not death wise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they know she died of blunt force trauma, right? Because yeah. they, they got her s skull. At this point, yeah. And they know from his own words that he hid the body. Right. He admitted to it. So they charge him with murder. So some prison snitch says okay, he made an snitch. admission of having sex with Laura Miller. <gasps> Clyde had sex with Laura. Yeah. And killed her. And how he killed Heidi. But guess what the Texas law is? You cannot be convicted based on jailhouse informants. No. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question though. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to get to it. Okay. DNA. Right. We had some DNA. Mama got some DNA. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to help us out here in a minute. Of course Texas would be a place. Uh, not, not jailhouse informants. It's like, this guy has a rap sheet right. fucking, like, so long. Right. We can't at I least. I mean, I get why you would. Yeah, because yeah, people will say anything. Say anything I get, get that. Anything and, yeah, but still, but it's still like, there could be circumstances. This dude this dude is a circumstance. He yes. is a fucking giant walking circumstance that you yes. can't fucking control death wise. <laughs> That's going to stick with you forever. Honestly, I, death wise is like pro. Unfortunately, I hate Clyde, but like yeah. death wise death is like wise. <laughs> one of my favorite things. Okay. So 2014 court time. Uh -huh. So the defense brings the medical examiner to court that did the medical examination on her in the first place. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're like, Hey boo. <laughs> we just dug her up. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a fracture, a big fracture <laughs> to her head. Why does your report not show anything? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> WTF. Yeah. How'd you miss that? And and by the way, we know this all to be true because we literally had to dig her up. Mm -hmm. And so the DA is saying, you know, you clearly hid or distorted evidence yeah. in some form or fashion. And why was it to protect your reputation? I mean, what, what happened? Were reason? you, yes, exactly. And this is just, this is just yet another thing that helped Clyde get away with stuff. Yeah. Like all these things were happening to benefit Clyde, right? Yeah. The police not talking and blah, 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 blah. The medical examiner, the medical not, examiner doing not doing their job. Effing job. Yeah. Like, Oh God! Like how how are they so lucky? So um, <laughs> they're in Texas. God, sorry Texans. <laughs> <laughs> so they end up finding him guilty of manslaughter, okay. not not murder, but manslaughter. And you know the difference of manslaughter and murder, right? Manslaughter is kind of unintentional, where murder is like I'm gonna kill you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now it's time for sentencing. And the impact statements from Marla, the one that, you know, got watched and would touch while she was the daughter. The daughter. Yeah. Um, she's has starting to remember things slowly. She's going through therapy and all this stuff. She's starting to remember things. She remember one time where she couldn't wake up because he, and she remembers him making her drink Kool-Aid. 
Oh my god! Right, so he could do do whatever naughty, he wanted, terrible, with her. awful. Yeah, Clyde is just fucking disgusting. So yeah, he deserves. He all gets the convicted of twenty years in prison <sighs> for manslaughter. Yeah. So now it's 2016. This is almost 20 years after the beginning of this whole story. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Reese. He leads authorities to the remains of Jessica Kane and Kelly Cox. He actually killed them. <gasps> and Tim Miller, dad with a bone. Yeah. He's helping everything. Like he's doing the excavation, like he, where he like where he's pointing them to. He like goes and digs them all, digs them up. So he's totally helping. So you remember that murder in Oklahoma? Yes, yeah. That I just randomly yes, threw out there? Yes, that you just there? threw out there, yeah. Well, it turns out Bill Reese took a trip to Oklahoma. <laughs> that was his hometown. Okay. And he knows Tiffany. And he sees her, and he abducts her, and he rapes her, and he kills her. And like a couple of three days later, after he did that, he calls Tiffany's mother and goes, oh, I heard about Tiffany. Oh, my God. I've heard of these people. I've doing heard. That. I heard about her murder. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I did it. I did. Yeah. Again, he knows he did it. And he but he's like calling her mom and going, oh, I feel so bad for you. And I'm so sorry. That and plays into that like psyche where it's like they kind like of like have control. this. Yeah. It's like it's like that God complex where like, yes. I, I, I took Little away her life. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I took away her life. And like, I'm going to try to like God, make you think. Gross. It's so disgusting. It's so disgusting. I don't, I don't get it. Oh God, I can't. I well, can't thank wrap God. my brain around it. Thank God, honestly, Kevin, <laughs> that you don't <laughs> that get I'm it. Not Bill yeah. or Clyde. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Oklahoma transports Bill back to uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma to stand trial for Tiffany. Sure. He pleads not guilty, even though they had that DNA. Yeah. Now they have DNA. Yeah. He has a tape confession from him, like talking to peeps. Jury deliberates for two hours, and he's like. You die. You, yeah, you fucking did Oklahoma this. Oklahoma's you destined. You're dead. Yeah. Well, instead of going to death row, Texas gets him back where he can, is convicted of the murders of Laura Smithers, Jessica King, right. Kelly Cox. And so to avoid the death penalty, he pleads guilty in Texas so that he can serve his three licenses in Texas and doesn't get killed in Oklahoma. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? <sighs> I don't know. I know. Same. I'm so torn. I feel the same way about that. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma is still trying to get him back there. I don't. They want to kill his ass. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame him. I wouldn't blame like anyone who feels that way. Personally, I'm like, I don't either. I don't, I don't know don't if either. an eye for an eye, eye for is an a eye, thing. Right. Steal. Get your hand chopped off. Yeah. Murder someone. Get murdered. That was him or Robbie's code. And I, f yeah, I mean, I, I understand like he's a piece of shit person. Yes. Like all these guys are like pieces of shit. Yes. But like, yeah. Like, do we stoop to their level? I know. I don't know. I don't either. Like, so how, do you get to play God? Because you, they played God. They, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> so torn. I don't, I don't I guess so, I don't have an opinion. So Bill, yeah. So Bill has tried for three different. Yes. 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 And he just took advantage three of life, that space. Totally. Totally. And Oklahoma's still trying to get him back to this day. They want they want him dead. So we finally figured out who our serial killer is. Yeah. So now what about all the other cast of characters? Yeah, that's the question. So in 21, October of 21, Clyde is released from prison. The god-awful Clyde. Yeah. Of course. Uh, he's released under mandatory supervision. Released on parole. He serves eight years. He gets on early release due to some effing technicality yeah i'm saying uh 2021 that mm -hmm. was just at the time yes. of recording two years ago yeah it, it had something to do with some laws that weren't on the books at the time that he was around yeah <laughs> and now he's out it's fucking law sometimes mm -hmm. july of 22 tim miller was awarded more than 24 million dollar judgment against the wrongful death lawsuit against clyde so now Clyde owes him $24 million. Good. 
So the FBI continues to work on all of these cases that are active. Um, sorry, back in 2017, they tried to use genealogy to try to identify Janet and Jane Doe. Remember Janet yeah, and Jane yeah. Doe? They still didn't know who they were. Oh. Um, and the League City, that stupid police department, yes. totally resistant in letting They're them not do DNA. Wanting- They're not wanting them to do it. And I was like, why? What are you what holding out What is wrong with you? Yeah. What's, what's happening with you? Yeah. Well, I don't. I couldn't find anything that explained what what their reasoning was. But finally, they give they give in, and the FBI is able to identify them. That's Jane Doe was Donna Purdue. She was missing at thirty four. Mm. Jane Doe was an Audrey Lee Cook. She was missing at thirty. Um, and the family had been looking for them for a very long time. And and wh- why the two weren't. Con- and it didn't connect the two with what was happening. I'm not sure, but, and, and she was, they were out of the age range. Too. Yeah. I was going to say they're a lot older than, so we're not entirely sure that it's these the same two, two guys. icky people. Yeah. Um, and Clyde has never been charged for any crimes related to Calder. Of course. Road. Yeah. Cause they don't have the proof for it. Yet. They don't have the proof yet. So, Clyde's out of jail, but owes Jim 24 million bucks, yep. which he's never going to get. Honestly, Tim for sure is going to be like watching like if every there's move, a, every move that Clyde makes. Yeah. If there's any way that Clyde could be free, mm-hmm. but really not be, yeah. it's with a fucking man with, like Tim, Tim over his watching shoulder. him. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, I fucking have, I have people all over the place. I have cameras. Yeah. I'm watching what the fuck you're doing, bro. Like, good luck. Cause I know old- what he did with Robert. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Exactly. And Robert didn't, he wouldn't give go to jail for anything. No, he was kind of pretty much innocent. Clyde's a scumbag. Cl- Clyde's a total scumbag. So now imagine what Tim's going to do. Oh yeah. Tim's over it. <laughs> Bill, he's in prison for the rest of his life. He's yep. got three life sentences. Plus good. he's going to get m- murdered if he lives out three lives. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then the other missing girls, let's just hope that. They find, they, like, at least their families find some kind of solace. I can't. I can't. No. Terrible. It's so it's so sad. And I, I guess, like, you know, I know that there are different projects and stuff that you can donate to. Um, yeah. And at least just, like, getting the story out oftentimes mm-hmm. really helps just families. Helps. Like, like hearing hearing these girls' uh, names and yes. saying them out loud yes. um, is is enough to potentially get, you know, mm-hmm. get it picked up or have, like, another story yeah. written, which is really how you find out who these killers are. That's right. Because, you know, you can, you can think that you've solved it. Like, you're, as much as you want to think, Clyde, that you've gotten away with a lot of Something. shit. Something. Yeah. You're fucking, your time's coming. Karma, bitch. Yeah, karma is a total bitch, for sure. You know, I, and I think back, you know, like I said, Robert was not a good person. No. Abused animals, which that is the one thing in, that I cannot, It that sends me over the edge. I can't tolerate that. And But I feel so bad Did about you? what happened with him and Tim. I it just, it's just kind of an unfortunate event, but. In any event, I don't think that I'm going to be traveling down I-45 anytime no, soon. No, we are not going down Super there. Super not a fan of Texas. Of course, you know, this shit happens in every state, so I am like, I shouldn't probably say that. But When you leave our town, the Bizarre AF town, like, uh-huh. there is the option to go down I-45, and, like, yes. I never take it. Right. I'm never going to, especially <laughs> after hearing this. Uh-huh. Well, no. especially you being a, a pretty little young thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, young, 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 very young. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh my god! So Clyde. that was my twisty story. I know it was Ugh. super kind of a downer, but um, it's, it's just important. so crazy, and especially since there's things still open. Yes, there's still open cases, and there's still. I'm sure there's going to be more developments. Yeah, especially as like you know DNA gets better, and they're able to maybe potentially exhume the bodies and, right. and find some. Right. Um. Thank you for sharing that mm-hmm. with us. I think it's important to tell these women's tales. Good. Um. Because there are pieces of shit out there, but these women were real women that yes were here. That's right. And um, they deserve. Regardless of your class in life, you're still a human being. You're still a human being. And like your end or your demise, like the the way that you had passed away does not define who you were as a person. And these were important people that a lot of people loved. That's right. 
So thank you for sharing. That's right. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thanks for all my journey, joining on me on my journey. I need a, I need a fucking drink after that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.